Hello, this is Pastor Mike Jones with Life Together in Christ Daily Devotional. And today we're, we are going to be looking at uh, Jesus as he teaches uh, the religious leaders and the people around him about inner purity and what it means to have our hearts in the right place. And so as we prepare to look at the scripture, which comes from Mark chapter 7 today, let's uh, pray together as we ask for the Holy Spirit to speak into our hearts and to help us be more pure. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is alive today. And Lord, just as Jesus taught the disciples uh, and religious leaders what it means to be pure and holy, we pray, Lord, that this day, through your Holy Spirit, you would speak to us and, and teach us Lord, if there is anything that we are doing that is unholy, uh, we pray that you would convict us of that, Lord, and that uh, you would lead us uh, to have pure hearts. We thank you for your word today that conveys the truth that Jesus Christ spoke to us today. In your son's name we pray, amen. So today we're going to look at Mark chapter 7, uh, verses 1 and following. One day, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. The Jews, especially the Pharisees, do not eat until they have poured water over their cupped hands as required by their ancient traditions. Similarly, they don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water. This is but one of the many traditions they have clung to, such as their ceremonial washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of religious law asked him, why don't your disciples follow our age-old tradition? They eat without per first performing the hand-washing ceremony. And Jesus replied, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. For you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. Then he said to the religious leaders, you skillfully sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your own tradition. For instance, Moses gave you this law from God. Honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. But you say it's all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you, for I vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you let them disregard their needy, needy parents. And so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. And this is only one example among among many others. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear all you listen, he said, and try to understand. It is not what goes into your body that defi defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. Then Jesus went into a house to get away from the crowd, and his disciples asked him what he meant by the parable he had just used. Don't you understand either, he asked. Can't you see that the food you put into your body does not defile you? Food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. By saying this, he declared that, that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. And then he added, it is what, come from, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within, and they are what defile you. I think uh, this is a very appropriate time of year to be looking at uh, this scripture to see what it might say to us today because it's during this time of year during what we call the season of Lent prior to Easter when many people might give something up 
uh, during Lent as a sacrifice toward God. Now, what we have to be careful of is uh, giving up an item and making that sacrifice doesn't make us holy, but it really only provides an opportunity uh, for us to use uh, time or use an opportunity where we would use that item or whatever. So for, say, for example, during Lent, if a per person gives up uh, electronics, uh, like look, watching the computer or doing Facebook or something like that, uh, it's not giving up Facebook that would make a person holy, but it only provides an opportunity for us to draw closer to God and to have our hearts dwell on God and on the things of God and to pray and read scripture instead of spending time on Facebook. And so the same thing uh, is true with the Pharisees. Uh, they developed all sorts of laws that they felt were important to make them holy. And what they were missing was, even when they were doing those laws, fulfilling them, uh, in their hearts, they were disregarding people around them. Uh, they were uh, judgmental of other people. And so in their hearts, they were actually far away from God. And uh, so we have to be careful uh, in this scripture for what Jesus says, that it's not what comes into our body that defiles us. So uh, giving up Facebook or uh, giving up a food to eat, uh, all those things are good if we do them to draw closer to God and use that opportunity. But if we're just giving up those items thinking, if I make the sacrifice, it's going to make me more holy, uh, then we can be confused, especially if uh, in our heart we are still uh, committing sin. If we are, uh, for example, what Jesus says here, if we have evil thoughts, if we uh, think about sexually immoral things, if we steal, if we say, if we're angry with other people, um, it says here murder, but Jesus tells us that if we are angry at another person, we have committed murder, uh, adultery. If we even lust after another person in our mind, we have committed adultery. If we are full of greed, wickedness, if we are deceitful, um, if we envy other people, if our pride gets the best of us, if we think that we know everything and we're always right, and if we have to be right, uh, our pride is a sin, and Jesus says that all of these things that come from the heart are what really defile us. And so during this time of Lent, even though we might give up something, uh, the goal of giving that item up is really to draw closer to God so our hearts would be transformed uh, so that we wouldn't think evil thoughts, so that we wouldn't think lustful thoughts, so that we wouldn't be angry at other people, that our behavior would be changed by our heart. And so during this uh, time and today, let's pray for our hearts to be transformed today, for our hearts to be made more holy, so that the actions that are born in the heart become actions that are loving towards other people, that are giving, that are generous. And so let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Uh, that can transform our hearts, for your Holy Spirit that can work in us and make us more loving, to think good thoughts, to look for the best in other people, to uh, not be judgmental, but be have hearts of compassion. Lord, we pray that you would soften our hearts and give us a new heart today. And Lord, we pray that out of the thoughts of our hearts, uh, the things that we think about, that actions that lead to life for ourselves and others would come about. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells within us. We give thanks for this week uh, to celebrate your resurrection and new life that you give. And Lord, we pray that this day, through your Holy Spirit, you would give each one of us new life as you transform our hearts and make them more holy. In your Son's name we pray. Amen.
God loves you, and I love you, and God wants to give you a pure and holy heart today. May we receive those hearts that God wants to give us. Amen.